I'm in my 2002 Porsche 911 and today I want to switch out the head unit. Um, this car has the Bose factory system and uh, it's not terrible. Um, I'm going to switch out the head unit and evaluate it and uh, if I want to swap out the amp and speakers it's not terribly difficult with this car. Um, the amp is right in the front trunk so you can get at everything. Um, because this car is a 2002, this has got conventional wiring. Um, I think in 2003, the later cars had op fiber optic system. So, um, you know, you'd have to go from like a digital to analog conversion to, to keep that system. But this is, is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, and, you know, doing the research uh, to try to figure out how to do this, um, I was surprised that the wiring was still unclear. Like, um, seems like people went to aftermarket wiring harnesses and paid sixty, seventy dollars to companies that would put the wiring harness together. And um, no, you know, the people that did do it themselves uh, just didn't post clearly what the connections were, at least as far as I could see. So. I'm going to bring the camera along with this install and hopefully be able to answer all the, the questions on, you know, just the mechanical install and the, the wiring um, so that anybody that wants to do this in their car, hopefully they can get all the information in one source, okay? So we'll be back uh, when we start the install. I just want to say uh, I ordered the head unit from Crutchfield and it includes some accessories that you'll need for this. Uh, and so it, whether you get it from Crutchfield or not, I'm going to uh, put all the links to these uh, components that you'll need for this swap. Um, and just to give you an idea, here's one. This is the tool to remove the OEM um, head unit. So I'll show you how that works when we get to it. Uh, here's... Uh, antenna, uh, antenna adapter cable. Um, so these European head units have different antennas, so they give you the, that adapter. Um, I'm going to show you the harness that I had to buy, because um, Crutchfield supplies one, but you're going to need two if you don't want to splice into the OEM wiring harness. Um, I'm trying not to cut into any wiring. I just want to use the connectors. That way I can go back to OEM if I want. So I'll, I'll again, all these will be in links uh, at the description of the video. And I'll show you that when we get to it. This is a um, kit to install a double DIN into this space here. And this is by Metra, and I, the part number will be in the description. We'll see how that works when we get to it. But basically, uh, you, if you're looking to do this, you've probably already seen this online with other sources. But this uh, HVAC control ends up down in this space here. A cubby ends up in this space. This gets removed. This is cassette storage. A lot of them have CD storage. So then a cubby's here, and then you've got your double DIN uh, head unit right here. All right, so we've got our tools in here. Uh, they slide right into these slots, and if you push it in far enough, it's going to click. And then we should just be able to pull the head unit out. All right, so... We're back. I'm got, I want to remove everything so I can look at the wiring better. I can't really see what's going on. So this trim piece for the HVAC control should just pop out. Two Phillips heads, we're going to remove these. There 
this should just pull out and we can remove the cables for this yeah, it's pretty easy uh, there's like a little lever here you're gonna move that up and pull okay so right here is the tab you're gonna push down on this so not the lever it's the tab right here same here see this tab pinch it okay let's keep going we're gonna remove this cassette storage piece these things all pop out All right, we're getting there. So now, because we're gonna relocate the HVAC control down here, we've gotta take that wiring harness. Um, which are these two connectors. And we've gotta come down in back and go from behind and then come up into this space. So I'm gonna try to do that now. Uh, and I'll be back to show you what I've done. All right, so hopefully you can see here with the sun, but uh, this carpeted panel is in here. There's two tabs that fasten right here. Basically, you're just gonna grab it like this and pull it and it removes very easily. And so now I can get behind there and I can pull those uh, HVAC wires down. All right, you see the uh, HVAC control wires. Now this, there's a, a hole, an access hole. Right, yeah, I can't really see. Right here. Okay, so I'm gonna route the wires through there should be you know straightforward I'll be back all right so here's uh, the piece from the metric kit it's gonna go in like this cubby up here HVAC down here this these two pieces have to be removed because there's tabs here that will go underneath there so I'm gonna remove these two and be right back all right, so I've got these panels flared out so I can get the Metra um, trim in there after I get the HVAC control in. So let's put this in here now. There it goes. All right, I'm shutting this off so I don't bore you with screwing screws in. All right, climate controls in. Here we put the Metro piece. I've got to get these tabs back over but I'm gonna get out of the driver's seat because I'm gonna have to push pretty hard to get those to clip so I'll be back okay here's the finished lower console it looks pretty good 
And now it's time for the radio. We'll be back. So I think what's going on with all these taps is that at one point somebody modified the system. They disconnected the CD changer and they used a three and a half millimeter um, headphone cable. So they swapped it out so that you could use a headphone input for an aux. So instead of the CD changer, you could have, you know, this headphone input. So this might have happened early on before there were clear wiring information for these cars and whoever the installer was maybe they just put a tap on every wire to try to identify what each of these wires are that's my best guess all right i have two harnesses and again i'll put it in the description of the video this one came with the head unit from crutchfield but on their website it says you know uh rear speakers won't work this and that like all these caveats so because basically they're saying that their harness is incomplete this harness is um, this harness is similar but it includes this connector here which you need for this uh, set of connections and honestly because we're not using the CD changer or any of that stuff all I need is the remote amp uh, turn on from this connector now I could have cut the wire and made that connection myself without a connector but I bought these two harnesses thinking I was going to use the original connectors so um, you could save money if you uh, if you just f find that remote turn on wire and make that connection yourself to your head unit um, but I've already purchased this, so I'm going to use it. I'll show you which wire that is when we get to it. So let me take more of a look at this and we'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I went online and I think I have the wiring diagram that represents this system. You know, there's a few out there, but um, what I found was if you look at this connector, all these pins are used and that's going to connect into this part of the harness and these are all speaker connections so that's clear and you know I have no question about that this one these pins are mostly populated there's seven that are used and if you look at this part of the connector there's only four so you know looking at which ones are which online at the wiring diagram and I'll put that in the description um, I find that there's like uh, one connection is for speed sensitive um, volume control ones for power antenna ones for you know these are common wiring looms that are used in other cars so even though they're populated on the connector they're not used okay so th that was reassuring to me because I've only got four connections and if I look at which four they actually connect to those are the ones that are needed you know it's 12 volt constant 12 volt switched ground and um, uh, there's one other one uh, maybe illumination or something so those are needed and that's why this connector only has four the other ones are relevant to this car okay so now I can, now that I know what each connection is, um, I can go to my Alpine uh, owner's manual because I'm putting in the an Alpine deck and I can uh, connect um, the, the Alpine connector, the Alpine harness to this and I'll know which connections are which. So I'm going to do that now. I'll bring the camera um, and just kind of show you that. All right, so I'm going to uh, start soldering this harness together. But this connector is the Alpine uh, connector. And there's actually two, but the other one is for um, line level outputs for the speakers. So here's the Alpine wiring diagram. So it's got all the callouts for the colors and what each one is. 
and here's the Metra uh, harness and on the packaging it also has that and then when I get to um, 12 volt uh, constant and 12 volt switched I need to reverse them so whatever like for instance this says um, the constant is yellow so if I go to my Alpine the constant is yellow so I should go yellow to yellow but I'm not I'm gonna go yellow constant to switched which is red so this yellow will go to this red and vice versa for the other one so this is a harness that comes with my head unit the Alpine head unit um, these are the front preamp outs and these are rare these other two we're not going to use this is subwoofer we don't have a, a separate subwoofer line in on the Bose amp and these are for cameras so these are the two I need to use so what I'm going to do to get the um, the line level from the Alpine to the metric connector is I'm going to use these four RCA's that came with this connector but remember we don't need these All, the only thing from this connector we care about is the the blue amp turn on these I'm gonna cut right here and I'll put it on my uh, other harness for the line level into the Bose amp okay so I snipped these out of this connector and here are your wires uh, the black is a common negative for all of these RCA's so these are the positives here for each one of the speaker outputs the park so this is a parking brake bypass so with this I won't need to hook this wiring to the parking brake of the car and with the Alpine you can't even get into the settings of the head unit without um, without putting the parking brake on so a lot of features of the head unit don't work unless you can stop the car and put the parking brake on so this is a micro bypass which you can get at Amazon the I'll put a link to um, their cheap 10 bucks whatever the way this wires is black goes to ground on the harness blue in this case will go to the amp turn on um, and then this green will go to in my case the um, yellow with a blue stripe so this is the parking brake connection for Alpine so green will go to this so um, let me solder that and get that on the harness all right here's the harness all done so these two connections go to the head unit the Alpine um, and the, the Alpine head unit out goes to these this these are the preamp speaker out to the Metro harness speaker connections that go to the bows um, and this is all of the uh, power accessory remote amp and this is the uh, parking brake bypass so we've got everything done kinda looks like a mess I can probably tighten things up but I like the idea of keeping every you know keeping as much um, loose wiring as I can just so I can kind of position the stuff when I go to put the head unit in so that's it we'll go back in and button up the install all right now that we know the electrical is good we're gonna install the radio so what we need to do here is remove this trim piece and uh, let me get the tripod and we can work that out all right so Let's work this trim out.
All right, so we've got a bunch of connectors in the back. Let me release these connectors so we can remove the panel. Just figured I'd give you a real quick tip. These connectors, I'm trying to remove it from the button and it's not coming off and I'm looking for a release and I, I can't really figure it out. And then the, basically the button pops out of you know, it's housed here with these little clips. So take the whole button out. Don't try to remove the connectors. All right, so I've got two Phillips head screws here and one, two, three, four uh, Torx T20. So I'm gonna remove all of those fasteners and I'll be back. So I lost some footage of me cutting the Porsche trim in the Metra installation kit it instructs you to cut pieces of the trim and I had that filmed but I must have deleted it so it's pretty straightforward I'm going to show you with a diagram this is from the Metra kit so what they do is they have you cut from here down it's you see the shaded area hopefully it comes through on the video and then from here down then this cross piece comes out with that entire piece. Now, they make a point of saying, do not cut that piece or that piece. That helps guide the Metra trim kit in. And they also show a little bit of shaded area here and here. Now, what I ended up doing is cutting this entire piece off. I did it little, a little at a time until I felt that the, um, the, the head unit in the Metra trim fit into that space well. I just started with what they instructed me to do and then just kept working it little, little by little um, using like a hacksaw blade with a small handle. So just easy, easy enough to do. Um, I, when you do it in the car, obviously it's gonna make a mess, but um, you know, I had a shop vac and I had some towels out, so no biggie. All right, guys, so I couldn't get this piece out because I believe I have to remove this vent separately. Um, so I saw on a Boxster, um, there's two fasteners up here. So I think I have to put like a flat head in there and somehow push down and this will slide out. So I'm gonna see if I can do that now and then we'll give it another go. Okay, got it to release here. If you look down, these have to be pushed down to release the vent, okay? All right, so it just comes out. Now that the vent is out of the way, it can just pull right out. So let me do that. And just another thing before we go in and look at um, mounting the, the uh, head unit into that assembly. See this piece? That was connected to, uh, hold on, that upper lug right there, the upper one. I think the bottom lug comes in contact with the radio when it slides in. So basically, that brown wire is grounded to the chassis of the old radio. And I'm pretty sure this is like an anti-theft where if that connection is lost, I think it cuts the ignition. So pretty sure this wire will have to be stripped and grounded to bypass that anti-theft thing. So we'll find out for sure soon. All right, let's look at this real quick. So here's the head unit. It's going to be inserted into the Metra trim piece. It gets fastened here. Then the Metra trim piece is going to get inserted into this dash, this dash uh, trim. Okay, so if you notice, I cut the trim where I pointed out earlier. I left these two uh, plastic pieces here and I trimmed at an angle these two. And let's just see what happens when this goes in.
Okay, it seems to be flush here, but it's sort of proud up here. And if you notice, we got an angle here. So, what's happening is it's it's hitting here these these two pieces so I'm gonna take a Dremel and just kinda grind that down a little more, and let's see if I can get it more flush alright I just wanna show you that this is as good as I'm gonna get it you can see it's still a little proud but I mean straight on you don't really notice it I don't know if it'll even be anything that's noticeable in the car but the head unit is now fastened to the Metra trim and then now the Metra trim gets fastened to this assembly. Uh, let me go get those pieces. All right, guys, let me show you what I ended up having to do. Totally different than what I would have expected. So this metric kit just simply does not work with the 2002 uh, Carrera 996. Because it's got the cup holder, this whole piece, this assembly is different. Um, and so then the challenge is how do you get this to fasten to this piece? So Metra gives you these clamps that are supposed to come go around and they're supposed to fasten to the, the chassis of this trim piece from the Porsche, but it doesn't because this is a different design than the older ones. Now, I saw somebody actually got a hose clamp and they got a really big hose clamp, went around the whole thing and, and secured it that way, probably would have worked. But if you're careful, and it just happened that I had holes from the Alpine that lined up in the Metra kit and there were a couple down here. So I drilled holes here and I fastened it that way. Okay, so now here's your Metra trim piece. Here's the Alpine and the whole thing is held by one, two, three, four screws. So now this entire assembly can just mount right into the Porsche. So I still have to do the microphone, the USB, the um, get a ground that anti-theft there's still some wiring stuff to do this battery is really low so uh, I may I may just show you what I ended up doing but let me let me see what I can get done before the battery dies all right we're back in the car and uh, this wire I just stripped this is that anti-theft I'm gonna go to that screw right there all right I just took my own meter and that screw goes to ground either one of these okay so there's my ground now the other thing is um we should go down here if you remember we took the rug off down here and it kind of opened up all this so see this wiring harness this was just sitting there and i had read this on the forums that this plug and it didn't seem like many people knew what it went to so i don't know it's a mystery but the green wire is switched 12 volt and the brown is ground so i'm gonna uh use these two for my radar detector and i'll run the radar detector up along here and go up the a pillar and then fasten it up here somewhere and the radar the radar and the mic will end up kind of in the same place. So I'm going to, I'll be rooting both of those along the same route. Okay. Um, well, like I said, I have that USB cigarette lighter that will go to the head unit. And I think that's about it. I'm going to start making these connections and we'll be back. Okay, here's the finished product. I didn't bother showing the reassembly. It basically, if you follow along in the beginning, you're just going to reverse those steps. Um, you can see the molding here sticks out a little bit, but really it's not bad. It doesn't look unusual to the eye. It doesn't stand out at all. 
Um, we got the USB cigarette lighter. I'll probably end up just putting my phone in here, or if I want, I could still have the phone here, but with the display, I really don't think I even need to have the phone available in any way. So probably just tuck it in there. It's going to charge, too, while I'm using it. Um, the good thing about the Alpine, this particular model is a shallow depth. It really doesn't have a good front amp, you know. I don't think it puts out as much power as uh, most double din. But in this case, you're using the preamps, so it doesn't matter. You don't care about the amp side. So the shallow depth really gave me plenty of room to get all of the wiring harness and everything. You know, there's a big, long USB cord connected to this. Everything fits back there. It doesn't bind. You don't have to push on anything. It's really pretty clean. A um, couple more things. So the microphone, what I ended up doing is, if you see right here, I've got it clipped to the dash. The wire is run down here. I have the wire coming across here and back in. I'm going to start this way. Uh, I might end up changing it, but for now I'm going to try it. That bring, really brings the microphone as close to my mouth as possible. I was going to come up here, I played around, I made some test phone calls. If I could keep it in this area, I was better off, so I'm going to give that a try. Now, over here, uh, we came up and we put the um, radar detector power right here. Now this is a little too tight. I'm going to move the mount over, but just so I can show you guys, this is uh, one of those adhesive mounts. So I've got to, I'm going to detach this, move it here, so this will basically just not hang so low. Um, this was straightforward. I didn't remove any of the moldings. You can just kind of work the wire in behind everything, and that's basically it. Okay, I know that's lame music, but it's no copyright. And I don't know how it sounds with the GoPro mic, but it sounds good in the car. And it sounds better than the original head unit, for sure. And I just want to make this final clip so that you guys had the information. When you're shopping for a head unit, um, you may want to consider that it has certain features. Because if you're going to use the, the stock amp and the stock speakers in this car it took some adjustment and honestly if it didn't have some of these features I don't think it would have worked um, the way this Bose system uh, is designed is that the subwoofer in this car it's a cabriolet okay so I've got one driver up here in the front console it's undersized and that subwoofer gets its signal from the full range signal that goes to the front and rear speakers. So through filtering, Bose has designed it so that it gets whatever range of frequencies, you know, through filters. There's no dedicated input at the Bose amp, which means that you can't use an output on your head unit. You have to send the full range to those speakers and hope that you know it's somewhat balanced and in, in my case it really wasn't I when I fired up this head unit it sounded really boomy um, it was not good and I thought uh oh you know I might be in trouble here but I knew the Alpine had a lot of settings and I don't want to um, make it you know uh, I don't want to make a commercial for Alpine because I don't you know whatever head unit you get I'm just saying you should consider uh, that it has these types of features because this is what really helped me get the sound that I needed. In this case, this head unit has a, a great crossover adjustment. So I can look at both the front and the rear channels and I can set a, a crossover with adjustable slope and play around with the frequencies that I'm sending to this full range um, front and rear 
and by by playing around with those frequencies I'm really changing the frequencies that go to the sub and that's what made the difference so um, the crossover was huge if you get a head unit I'm almost thinking like you, you, it's risky to not have it because you may not be happy with the sound but this was huge made a huge difference and then I've got a nine band equalizer so I can play around with um, those adjustments as well but um, now that I've been playing with it and you know I've got presets and I've you know kind of done a B comparisons and I'm really having fun with it and the sound is surprisingly good it's really it's really good I mean I I, I still get a lot of volume and um, I'm happy with it so I know I can always put an aftermarket amp in the in the trunk and uh, replace the speakers it'll definitely sound better but I'm gonna see maybe I'll live with this for a while so anyway uh, hope hope this installation video helped you guys just wanted to give you that last bit of info thanks